Fantastic. I hate my radio voice. Welcome back to D and Matt Show. Hello. Today we're gonna be uh going over our top five top five games. Make it a little bit more easier, or do you want to do a top ten? Well, I think top five would be a lot harder than a top ten. Oh, let's do it. Let's do a top five then. We've got to go into a bit of depth. Okay, we got to know what the ground rules are. Is this for uh, one one system or for uh, uh, for all consoles? It, do, it doesn't top matter. Top five gaming experiences you've ever had. Yeah, anything. or you can just you know it just it, just whatever you fancy. You just take your pick for PS3, for PC, you know. Ooh, this is gonna be hard. Okay, well, um, in no particular order, right? Just yeah, just no particular order. Or you could just go your first one. How do you want to do? Do you want to do uh, you go first or I go first, or we we both do one at a time, each alternating? Um, well, we could just do like number one, number two, or number three. You know. All right, set us off, man. Okay, all right, I'll set us off. Well, at number one for me would be well, because I'm more of an Xbox 360 person. Uh, for me, my favourite game of all time has got to be the Fallout series. Nice. Now, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, brilliant games. The, but- the in-depth of what you can do to it. I clocked up... I know this is going to sound really sad on my behalf, but I've clocked up nearly 500 hours of gameplay on Fallout 3 alone. Wow. That is... a. Uh- that is quite a significant I, I, Yeah, I've gone over every single nook and cranny. I have I know how to start off with a sniper rifle. I know how to... You know, it's all these little things that you just pick up. And it's just mm-hmm. like... Uh, people say to me, oh, you have no life. Because you play Fallout 3 for 500 hours. And well, it's just it like, sounds, it sounds like It sounds like Fallout 3 is your life. Yeah, it is my life. <laughs> well, it is kind of my life. <laughs> as soon as I heard about Fallout New Vegas, I was just like, oh my god. You know, it's the most... Have you beat that? I've, yeah. beat, I've beat it. How many hours have you put into that? I've nearly 200 plus hours yeah. on yeah. that one. And I've got all the DLC for that as well. Yeah. Uh, downloadable content, just in case. Um, but, the, you know, it, the game of New Vegas just brought a whole new concept of you're a courier instead of coming from the vault you were a courier and you've just been shot in the head because someone wanted the platinum chip and that can control a whole vast robot army and you know but um it's just the fact that you can gamble you can mod mod your weapons to uh, i don't know all those uh, madness. good options yeah change you your ammo types create new ammo types well yeah it sounds you know you definitely are into fallout but i'm wondering that was a clear number one for you yeah. um but we're not necessarily doing this in order right no well so, I, I decided to do it in order because I, I i'm more order so is your next <laughs> one actually going to be your second favorite game then yes let's hear it all right my second favorite is another xbox 360 title was gears of war ah which one the first all three of them the story alone I mean, they're... Isn't that but, kind of cheating, though, to, you know, if you're talking about a game to mention the entire franchise? Uh, well, not really, because it's still one franchise. All right, fine, we'll go with that. I mean, I mean, if... A bit of a spoiler for people, and if... No, no, no I'm going to play... I haven't played it yet. Oh, I, okay, I plan, oh, okay. I plan oh, on I playing I it, so. well, Close your ears, then, DJ. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so, okay, what's your third, then? Uh, my third... Third. Now, this is going to be a bit difficult because I really enjoyed the Black Ops story. Uh, the, well, the Treyarch story. But then Infinity Ward story was pretty captivating and, you know, destruction. But I'm not going to actually say that's my third. My third story, if, if anything, was Battlefield 3. Now, that game was... Oh, I don't know. I enjoyed that too. The, I think it's one of the best battle sims out there. Best battle sims out there so far for a console. Uh, that's for a console, not for a PC. Mm-hmm. But for a console, the the weapons absolutely narrowed down to a perfect line. The I don't know the you know the way that they speak, the way that they look at each other, and you know like, you can you see know, the, in depth. I, I, I like the music on that too. I like the way that the whole soundscape of it was. It yeah, was the music of it was yeah. very captivating. That's the one thing I liked about it. Cool. Uh, so that's that was number three, right? Yep, that was number three. Uh, now number four is another what a first person person shooter, and that's got to be Medal of Honor, uh, the newer one. I think it was. Oh, 
can't remember what it was called. Medal of Honor. All I know is something. I think it was one. the the remake was just called Medal of Honor. Oh yeah, okay. probably. But um, that one yet again another brilliant storyline. Um, the actual maps of it, uh, they give you coordinates. You type them in in Google Earth, they'll take you straight to that coordinate. It'll be, it's everything's narrowed down to a fine line once again. And this is your fourth favorite game this of all time. This is my fourth favorite game of all time. It's mm-hmm. absolutely brilliant. It's well done, and I just, yeah, I just love it. Okay, and number five, I'm sensing a, 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 <coughs> a theme here with your your games list. Okay, my number five is going to be a very big shock to you. Uh, it's a PC game, in fact, and uh, I played it very long time ago. It's uh, called Painkiller. Now, I don't know if many people have heard of this. I can't say I'm all that shocked after hearing the first four of them. Well, well, pa- well basically, Painkiller, what it is, is you have no objectives. You just kill you, a lot you've of just demons. Got, you've just got to kill, and you get this gun called a Painkiller. And it's basically... I don't know. It's like a saw. It's like, I don't know. I it's remember when awesome. that came out. Yeah. yeah. And then there's there's a gun that fires shurikens and lightning. Come on. Shurikens and lightning. Mm. And there is no objections to it. You've just got to kill, 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 kill. And if you don't kill, 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 you're dead. But it's That's just it. like, what? I, don't, I just cannot believe it. Have you played Serious Sam? Serious Sam? No, I haven't. That's the same thing, really. Ah, uh, but I like Killing Pink Killer Moors. Uh, it was done by Vale. Fair enough. Uh, the oh. ones who've done Half Life Two, yeah. So uh, yeah, that it yeah. counts wow. to be a good game. Um, so what about you? Come on, what about your top five? Come on. Uh, well, you know, like I said earlier, I've been playing games for about twenty years. Mm. Uh, so and I've played it on all kinds of. I played all kinds of systems from Atari twenty six hundred to you know to modern PCs and all that stuff. So uh, I. I will try to do my top five most memorable gaming experiences. They're my favorite games overall, <coughs> but I can't put them in any order. Oh, um, and this is very difficult. I know in there somewhere will definitely be XCOM. Okay, that I've may heard that, of that, that may be number one for me. XCOM was probably the most complete gaming experience I've ever had. Is that um, a strategy? It is. To call it a strategy game would be, to, it is stra- strategic. It is a strategy game, but it's so much more. There's so much mm. more to it, and it's I've never seen a game that goes so deep into the amount of decisions you make. Yeah. Basically, um, in summary, you have um, it's an alien invasion game. Yeah. But there are three modes of gameplay. Okay. There is the uh, <coughs> world overview. In which you 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 select where you're gonna put your base, what what country you know. You've mm-hmm. got a, a full three um, D polygon representation of Earth, and you can scale it and pick exactly where, what city, on what country on the planet you want to put it. Your base in your first base anyway, um, and there's a political nature to it. So let's say if you put your base in in England, uh, yeah, you know, and then. England is more likely to give you more funding because you're also trying to get funding. Everything you do costs. Uh, There's a whole uh, a financial ecosystem to it, um, or financial system to it, and so you can zoom into base building and actually start building your base. What's going to mm. be on there? Everything costs money. The type of radar you're going to put on there. How good is it going to be? How wide is it going to be? For example, if you get a small radar that uh, maybe can detect your full presence only within your country yeah then other you're not really going to be able to catch <coughs> your full activity in other countries hmm. maybe there's a lot going on you know in in northern africa hmm. uh, or in in india and because you're not actually helping them they may drop their funding at one point a big shock in the game for me was when uh one of the countries completely um cut off all communication because it turned out the country was so in uh, the highest levels of government had been infiltrated by oh. the alien yeah. force that uh the country became the whole country became an alien base basically oh god <laughs> uh, and, and um the stakes are so high in this game that um uh you could actually lose at the end of it all you really know? yeah you could well. lose i mean um i'll get the level of detail goes all the way from that global perspective yeah all the way down to sending okay let's say you do detect a ufo yeah if you've bought and equipped your some 
um, jet fighters. Yeah. You could send them out, and this is another game mode where you're you're giving your jet fighters orders and strategy on how to shoot this UFO down. Yeah. This UFO may either outrun your jet fighters, destroy your jet fighters, or if you, let's say, you didn't go and send jet fighters out anyway, it may go and land on in a city. There are two ways that uh, you can approach uh, a, a stopped UFO. Either the UFO has crashed mm -hmm. or you shot it down. Yeah. In which case, when you send in your, your, your XCOM team to go down on to land, um, you may... You know, you arrive at a damaged spaceship, and the aliens may be dazed, and some of them may be dead already, and it's a whole different type of game than if the alien ship had gone and landed on its own, maybe in a major city. Yeah. And started infecting. Anyway, I don't want to. I could go on forever, <laughs> but my, uh, long story short, so detailed. When you're actually getting your team together, you can yeah. name them. People grow. So let's say I, I have a character on their name, yeah. Matt. Matt could be from the beginning of the game gain experience, yeah. get better at aiming and so on, but maybe after three weeks of playing... I think already do that. <laughs> I think uh, after three weeks of playing, Matt could die. Yeah. And he'll be gone forever. Oh, that's very good on my behalf, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but I can actually choose. I can actually see Matt may be better with his left hand and his right hand. Yeah. I could put a gun on here. Oh, so it's very, gun. very detailed in what you all can the, all choose. All the way down to everything. You, you're, you're, um, if you have issues with uh, fear. Let's say you get you get afraid really quickly. Yeah. Matt, the character Matt. Yeah. It's possible that sending Matt into a, um, a, one of the scarier missions, he could literally freak out, maybe shoot a, a team member. Oh uh, yeah. So, so if so, anyone makes a noise, it's about. Yeah. There's anyway. So the le the level of depth is just unprecedented. So Ooh. XCOM has to be on there for me That's because I am still in awe. So many game companies have tried to recreate it, have tried yeah. to do it. It's it's legend as you've heard of it, yeah. but they've all failed. To this day, it has they've not been able to capture that. Mm. And that says something for a game that came out in 1991 or something. 1991? Oh, that's the year I was born. Oh, there you go. I played it. I only played it uh, about five years ago for the first time. Really? Yeah. I, I finally decided to sit down and play yeah. it in, I think, 2007, and um, and I was blown away. Yeah, so, right, number two? Uh well, or number three, or another one uh, <laughs> would be, um, well, <coughs> Half Life. Ooh, Half Life. Half -Life. Now yeah. that is a good series. Uh, well, I'm sure everyone's heard of it. <laughs> I don't think. If I you haven't, you've been li living under a rock. <laughs> I would say every modern FPS owes something to Half Life at this point. Yeah. Just like the games before Half Life owed something to Doom. Um, Half-Life set the new standard. The whole idea of um, telling a story through in-game cutscenes with the and the silent hero Halo is a, is probably the most successful uh, mm. franchise I can think of. That that uh, really, I don't want to say stole or bar. I would say honored Half-Life. I would say the people that made Halo were probably big Half-Life fans. Mm. Um, uh, and and but many of those games do that now. We take it for granted. Before Half Life, that didn't exist. That wasn't there. Yeah. Okay. Um, another game I would have to say would be up there for me. Uh, well, the Zelda. Since we're doing franchises rather than specific games, the Zelda franchise. Ooh, Zelda. Uh, now that is a good franchise. I would not be able to pick between Ocarina of Time, uh -oh. A Link to a Past, or Skyward Sword. I'm sorry, but for me, it would be Ocarina of Time. I love that. Well, uh, yeah, all the, those three games for me are the pinnacle of game design. They were so fantastic. Skyward Sword being so recent, but still bringing out the inner child in me when <laughs> yeah. I played it. That was of amazing. Of course. It was, it's amazing how some games can do that. They mm. just bring out the inner child of you. It's just like, huh. Yeah, it was that, it's amazing. It's the sense of adventure and all of that was just great. Yeah. So uh, that is three. Uh, I mean, actually, doing it franchise-wise makes it all of my the more easier because I have to say a lot of my. Um, ooh, I need to be careful here because I only have two spots left. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> this is why I said you want to do ten, but no, if we yeah. said five it would be more difficult. No, no, yeah, five <laughs> would be more difficult. So I wanted to do ten. Yeah, uh, you don't want to pick five. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, I have to say the sheer amount of fun that I can trace back growing up to the Mario franchise. Oh, God. I can't, I can't ignore that. I mean, I was going to... I had to... It was either Mario or Street Fighter for this slot. 
Um, mm. um, but it has to go to Mario because yeah, um, Mario is such a bigger face on the franchise. You know, that's really kind of almost where it all started. Really, Mario. I played Super Mario. I, I played yeah, Super Mario Brothers when I came out back in the eighties <laughs> as this little kid, and I just well, I'll never forget just how I realized at that moment everything has changed yeah just everything has just changed at that split second nothing would be the same again no because i got brought because i got born in 91 of course i've already got most of the stuff but still my first console was a sega mega drive so i had sonic the hedgehog which really started it off for me that was good yeah cc (laughs) five five is really hard um but if I had more room, Sonic would be on there too. Although, <laughs> yeah, Sonic would be on there too for me. Cause modern that's what Sonic has off unfortunately fallen fallen off quite a bit, but Sonic still holds a special place. But Mario is just so yeah, he, defining for me. His face has been everywhere. His mm. face has been on. Oh, there's so many different things. And mm. um, I was uh, listening to a podcast the other night on YouTube, and uh, they were saying about how Mario Sunshine was one of the most disappointing ones of the the whole franchise. Which is still one of it's, it's compared to like, most games, it's still yeah, an I, incredible I, game. Yeah, it's still it still is an incredible game. I mean, I played it, and yeah, I was disappointed, but yeah. it's Mario. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, you it's, can't go wrong. It's it's its own standard. Yeah, you, know? um, you can't go wrong with Mario. <laughs> so number five, what have we got? <laughs> Come on, DJ. <laughs> Favorite game of all. I would have to say I am. This is almost a genre rather than a game, but it doesn't but, matter. But uh, um, but if I had to, to single it out, <coughs> I am a big, big fan of Agent Forty Seven. Ah, the Hitman series. They've got a new one coming out I soon. Know. And I have you have you seen the video to that? Yes, I saw if, that. I saw the eleven minute developer. Yeah, video for it. I uh, suggest if anyone is listening to this right now who hasn't seen the new Hitman, uh, well, the new Hitman uh, advert or gameplay or whatnot, go watch it on YouTube now. It is so awesome. It is just so awesome. Fantastic stuff, isn't it? Like the, yeah. The the, the the graphics, the, uh, the amount of decision you can make in there, yeah. and all that really good stuff. It's just so fun. So, so that that's it. That's my uh, my top five. That's uh, that's pretty good top five. I mean, we're very different in well in the way that we want to play games. Is if she, and probably you can tell DJ is more the strategic uh, strategic person. I'm more of the I go in fourth and blow everything up. So I should have really said mercenaries too as well in there because I love uh, that yeah. game. You know, just well. plant a C four on a building and yeah, it was kind of funny once. Uh, me and my friend we we're playing on mercenaries too. And uh, he goes, right, I'm just going to nip to the toilet quickly. Here you go. And he gave it to me. And he goes, oh, I'll be about five minutes. And he goes, I'll just, just have a little mess about. And he was doing a mission. I didn't know about this. So I've gone onto a bridge and I've blown it up. He's come back and he's gone, well, I've left you for five minutes. And I said, yeah, and I've just blown up that you know, that bridge. It was absolutely brilliant. He goes, I need to get across. Now I'm going to have to go around. That's going to take me ages. I went, I'm sorry, you shouldn't have left me with a controller. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, I guess if we had done a top 10, that would have been on there. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, Mercenaries uh, 2 would have been on there. But so many different gaming genres. It's amazing how it's evolved I through think the if years. you asked me to do this list again next month, I'd probably come up with some a slightly different one. Because mm. uh, a lot of it has to do with me being in the moment and on the spot right now. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just... <laughs> I know I, I, I... All the ones I mentioned... Yeah. I, I do like them. <laughs> But, uh, same here you know i've probably got tons more locked in my head well anyway i think that's about all the time we have for this show i thought yep. that was a pretty good yep. uh top five maybe we will come back with future top fives yeah and see if anything's uh, changed all right <laughs> uh once again this is d and this is matt and uh have fun sayonara